Hello, I'm Yasini Tavares and welcome to In Focus. Joining us today is Councilman of 2nd District, Trippy Congo. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I well, really appreciate it. Thank you for coming out, man. This is like yeah. maybe the second time you've graced us with your presence. <laughs> uh, that's the second time. I've only been invited twice. So I think oh, that's what it is. Oh, you're always invited. I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully after this interview, I'll be invited a few more times. But thanks again for having me. I really appreciate it. I think this is the first time we've had an interview together, right? Yes, definitely. Right. Definitely our Welcome first. Welcome back, too. Welcome oh, back. Thank I know you, you were here before and you saw another path but then you came right back to the city yes tv right. was calling me yeah, this is my that's, passion that's your passion right yeah, i've been doing this for so long so okay. it was happy i was happy to come back thank you all thank right you you're, welcome. you're welcome of course <laughs> some people don't yeah. notice when you leave and then you come back <laughs> uh -huh. but thank you well uh, back to you councilman can all you right. talk a little bit about uh why did you come back and now you're in your third term so right. instead of just leaving after your first term it could have been your rookie year mm -hmm. and uh going through all the bumps and hurdles that you did at that current term what made you come back repetitively and what did you learn? Um, I guess just always just trying to help uh, in any way that I can. That's why I first got into, um, I guess, city government was just trying to be uh, just a voice for the people of Wilmington and, and just trying to help out. Uh, I guess I'm still probably going through bumps and bruises. I think I don't think that it will ever end. It's, it's always a, you know, a learning process. But as long as I think I'm being uh, you know, effective and, and giving back to the people and helping the community and being a voice, for uh, for people who who want to be heard, I think I'll probably you know stay here for as long as I can. Uh, what are some of those ways as a council member that you feel you do make an impact within your community? Um, probably the biggest thing is just bringing information back to them. Just make uh -huh. I guess like being um, making the government more accessible, if that makes sense. Because a lot of times, like when I was growing up, I really didn't know how government worked. Uh, you know, we're not really taught that on a local level in in schools. So just growing up, not knowing how city council works, not knowing how you know government works in the state and in the county, I guess I just wanted to you know bring that back to to uh, to my community and letting them know that they're a very important process in it. A lot of times when we're voted into office and when public officials are voted into office, people just expect us to take the baton and run with it. But that's not really how it works. That's how that's not how it should work. Uh, we really need the, the community support on pretty much every issue. Uh, so I try to encourage people to come to the, you know, to the civic association meetings, to the, to the council meetings, just to be a part of, and, uh, you know, trying to see how, how government works because it's really important. That's right. And right. how does this life work as a council member? I mean, you're very well known in the community. You're mm -hmm. always out and about. You served on a lot of boards as well. So I can only imagine, well, one can imagine how many mm -hmm. inquiries you get just from a meeting one-on-one -on -one basis. Um, it's, it's frustrating, honestly, because I come from a background where it's a family-run business, and if I, if I see something that I don't think is right, I can fix it. But that's not how it really, that's not how it works with city government. You have to have, like, you know, there are 13 of us on council, so the majority of us have to agree on, on an issue to, you know, pass along to the mayor, then he has to agree on it. And then a lot of things that, that the, a lot of concerns of the community aren't really handled on a, a city level. They're handled on a state level. So we have to work with the, you know, the the, um, the state officials to to help them see how people in Wilmington feel. So it's really frustrating. I guess the process can be frustrating, mm -hmm. and sometimes it may seem like, you know, to people who are in our community that we're not uh, we're not doing anything. We're not we're not um, being maybe as aggress aggressive as we should be, mm -hmm. or we're not um, just listening to them. But a lot of the things that we that they bring up, it's really the state's responsibility. So it's our responsibility to kind of to try to put pressure, you know, on, on the mm -hmm. state to try to make those things, those things happen. Now, Councilman, even though um, one might consider it small steps, you are mm -hmm. making some steps in your district alone. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give a little bit of uh, background or update in regards to the problems that we had with the elevators in your district? Yeah, uh, not, not only in, in the second district, but pretty much citywide. Um, we had a lot of concerns, a lot of um, calls and um, emails, letters, you know, seeing people in the, in the, in the city daily about the high rises, um, that seniors live in. They're not all run by WHA, but some, some of them are. But a lot of them have had uh, issues with the elevators working on a regular basis. And this, is, have, this has been going on for years. And I guess this is one of those things that I was just talking about where we just can't fix it. Like, I just can't fix it immediately. I can't say, mm -hmm. let's fund new elevators because that's not how it works in, in the government, like with, with WHA. So I know seniors have been getting, been getting frustrated for 
at least the 10 years that I have been on council, and I'm sure it's been going on before that, with elevators not working. So I wanted to have uh, a meeting around it. So we invited WHA. We invited those seniors who live in the high rises just to come so WHA could hear from them directly. Mm -hmm. It was a good meeting. Uh, uh, WHA promised to respond to their concerns. We're gonna have a follow-up meeting probably in another month or so just to see where we are because I don't want it to be forgotten. I don't want the seniors to think that, you know, that we just had one meeting and, and that's it. But uh, we, I think we have to take care of our seniors. They, they paved the way for us and for us just to uh, ignore their quality of life, I think it's a crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, somehow we have to, I guess, help WHA realize how important security is for the seniors, right. how important just uh, qu the quality of life is in, in their high rises. And uh, Councilman Congo, you're known for not only being the voice for the senior citizens, but mm -hmm. also for the youth here in oh, Wilmington. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell us a little bit about uh, anything that's pressing? Like, for example, right now we do know that uh, in the Christiana School District, the schools are consolidating. Mm -hmm. And I know that was one of your biggest concerns in regards to what's going to happen to our youth. Right. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit and tell us about your take and your feelings yeah, on that? Yeah, um, I guess around education, I think that's where everything starts. I think that's just the foundation for a, um, a vibrant community, if that, if that makes sense. A lot of times we get caught up on crime and shootings and homicides, but we really can't talk about those things without dealing with education. Because uh, I think being undereducated or being miseducated or um, just not being educated at all leads to, leads to crime and leads to people doing things um, other than they should. So uh, I th again, that's, a, that's an issue that city council doesn't have like direct impact as far as mm -hmm. we, we, we don't have any authority in the way our kids are educated. And that's really mm -hmm. frustrating. People think that we do. I, I think we're one of the only states in the country where the council doesn't have any uh, direct authority on uh, how the kids are educated. Um, I want to thank Council, County Councilman Jay Street. He, he's a part of our group that's actually suing the state of Delaware for, um, for not providing the ad uh, enough funding mm -hmm. uh, for a public school system. It's okay to make changes. We can consolidate, we can move people around, we can um, send kids to different schools, but if we're not attaching money, if we're not attaching the funding that, that's necessary right. uh, for those schools, I think it's all in vain. I think it's just being done for, for a show. And are there a lot of downsides you see uh, with this decision being made? I think the-, the In regards biggest, to the demographic and who is it's gonna impact and- I think the biggest, mis the biggest, we're missing a picture about the funding because I mean, you, you can you can make changes, but if you but if you're not funding those changes, mm -hmm. like it's, like I said, it's, it's all in vain. Um, I don't care where a student is is educated, but if you're not educating them on the right, like on current subjects, and if you're not providing money to those to those schools to you know for resources, it really doesn't make sense. Those those schools they need um, resources to deal with um, trauma. They need uh, they need to try to reach out to the parents more, and, and a lot of times the parents get to blame, but those parents are the same ones who grew up in that same education system. Right. So they're, they're just as <laughs> uninformed as, 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 the, um, as the students may be. Okay. So it's really not fair to blame the parents. I think we have to take a strong look on, on how we're educating our children and the money that's, that's being allocated to, to educating our children. And you're only one council member, but right. I'm, I'm most certain that your voice as uh, council member second district is is being heard and uh, by you just putting your foot forward I think that's gonna be hey, and, and I don't want to I don't want to act like I'm, I'm the one who's doing it it's really councilman county councilman Jay Street he really took the lead he's been talking about it for you know for a while now how he was going to sue the state and I really commend him for having the courage to, to do it it's gonna be a long road but I think that uh, the public really needs to support and all government especially local city government really needs to support councilman Street and his group and their efforts against the state. Definitely, and before we close out here, mm -hmm. uh, summer's coming around the corner and the weather's getting warmer. Right. Uh, are there any pressing issues that you want to tackle in your district and as a council member? Um, I guess probably citywide, we're dealing with uh, you know, the young guys who, who, ride the, who ride the motorcycles and the, uh, the four-wheelers um, on, on, the, uh, on the city streets. I know there is a, um, I guess a um, an idea that we shouldn't that the police shouldn't pursue them. That probably makes sense because you don't we don't want to you know cause any more harm. But somehow we have to figure out how to deal with it. It's not even springtime, and you know, I see the guys daily, uh, you know, riding their motorcycles and and uh, you know weaving in and out of cars. So we really have to figure out how we're going to deal with that. And and a, and a lot of times, well, sometimes those guys are doing crimes on those bikes, and they're um, so we really have to 
take a serious look on how we're gonna how we're gonna deal with that. I mean, mm -hmm. it, I know it's fun. I know I know they need an, an outlet, so we really have to figure out. Uh, but there's some guys who are just taking advantage of it, so we have to figure out how we're gonna how we're gonna deal with that before the spring and the summertime hits. Definitely. Well, we do have some time, so hopefully something gets uh, addressed and something right. comes from that. Right, as and well. I want to encourage the public just to to call us on city council, um, call the mayor's office, and, and let them know how how they um, how they feel about that. Okay, thank you so much. All right, and unfortunately, welcome. we don't have too much time, but right. I just want to say, you know, thank you for doing the uh, student of the week as well. I know oh, a lot oh, of yeah, our, yeah, our a lot youth of here that's in the city of Wilmington fun. look forward to mm -hmm. that, and they get to go in a luxury car uh -huh. and eat, and yeah, I know that's, that's a great deal for them. Yeah, so. that's a lot of fun. Thank I've been doing that for about 15 years now, with kids who are doing well in school or just doing better in school. I take them for a limousine ride, take them to breakfast, and then take them to school in the limo. It's awesome. a lot of fun. Well, thank you so uh, much, Councilman. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks and for having we'll me. And hopefully see you again. Yes. As soon, soon as I'm invited. Definitely. I'll be back. Thank All you. Right. And next, we'll be talking about how our youth here in Wilmington can find employment. More when we return. If you slowly lost the ability to walk, what would you remember about your final steps? Victims of ALS lose the power to use their legs hold someone close and simply say, I love you, before their bodies gradually shut down and die. Join the ALS Association's Walk to Defeat ALS and help us find treatments and a cure for Lou Gehrig's disease. We, we just, just finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. Back to In Focus, I'm your host Yesenia Tavares and joining us now are Director of Parks and Recreation Kevin Kelly and Director, good morning. good morning, and Director of Youth and Families Nicole Adams. Good morning to you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. It's like old times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Sorry. Glad to see you back too. That's just true. That's just true. <laughs> well, one of the hot topics right now is uh, finding employment for youth. You know, summer is right around the corner, kids are going to be out of school and uh, we don't want the children to be idle during the summertime. Right. So I know the city of Wilmington is doing everything they, they, everything they can to find employment for them. So can we talk a little bit about that? So th thank you for having us on the show this morning, but you're right. Um, youth employment is very critical for the success of the city. The mayor has made an effort to continue the summer youth program, you know, in providing jobs. Uh, my role sometimes is to come in and change some things and do some things differently. So working with Nicole and others, we kind of rebranded the Summer Youth Employment Program to the Career Development Program, Youth Career Development. So what we're trying to focus in this year is a little bit different than the past. Um, in the past, there was a lottery. You put your name, you put an application in, we did a random generator, your number came up, you got a job. Mm -hmm. So this year, we've kind of got it split into kind of two tracks, the traditional lottery system that we'll talk a little bit about, and okay. what we're calling the internship program, which we're very excited about. So in a traditional lottery system, you'll still apply for a, a summer youth job, but this year you'll have to write an essay on why you want a job, um, a summer youth job. Okay. It's not gonna exclude you from getting selected, but we want young people to be able at least to tell us why they're looking for a job, you know, rather than just that you meet, you have a social security card, you meet the age requirements right. and so forth. And we'll have probably a little over 200 jobs in, in that, in those areas and those jobs will be probably mostly working for parks and recreation some will be working here in the building uh, others would be in daycares and, and Day different and small businesses, small businesses well. and so mm -hmm. forth around the city then and that application is due april 28th that application deadline is the 28th it's april 28th it okay. starts on the 17th of april okay but the one we're more excited about is the the uh, internship program so within the internship program you will now have to competitively apply for a job. So within the, and, and we'll talk a little bit more, I'll let Nicole, but within there we have jobs at Christiana Care, we have green jobs, we have jobs for pathways, young people in high school, we have jobs for young people who are disabled, and we have a variety of jobs like a summer camp counselors at the Summer Collab, at the Freedom School, and so forth. 
Okay. So those applications are due March 16th. So there's some urgency about trying to get those applications in, in the system. We have about 475 jobs that we're going to uh, provide this summer. That was going to be my next question. Yep. With the internships and the job employment, it yeah. sounds like more job opportunities. Yes, yeah, about 475. Um, the summer youth kids will work 20 hours a week, eight and a quarter an hour. This year, a little different than the past, we're going to have one day of training. We feel it's very important mm -hmm. for young people to learn some life skills uh, about trauma, how trauma is impacting them. The interns will probably work a six to eight week program, and mm -hmm. some may make a little bit more and others make a little bit less. One other portion of the internship program I didn't mention was uh, for young people who are in college who are gonna come here to kind of work you know, in, in, the, in the government. As I said, Tanya Washington got her start as a intern long ago and see where mm -hmm. it got her. My first job was a summer youth job. I was right. at a park in Browntown when I got out of high school. So I was a lifeguard. That was yeah. my first really? job with the city. Right. So, you know, it, it's brought a, it's given a lot of people an opportunity to be able to it's get funny. in, you know, to government and find, you know, a job. So with that, I'll let Nicole talk a little bit more about the, the type of jobs that will be available through the well, to, to thing. Well, real quick before we get to Nicole, I mm -hmm. want to talk, uh, touch bases on the essay since that's something new. Right. Is the um, thought to get these children more in line with real life world experiences? Like yes. you have to get the cover letter together, the yeah. resume before you get the interview. I think that's kind of unique in mm -hmm. its own way. So the, the mindset behind the essay is to prepare them for what to look for when they get out of high school. Um, the rigor that they compete against their peers all over the world for different positions. So mm -hmm. the essay is, is just an extra nugget that we've added um, to, you know, just to give them opportunity to be able to voice, you know, why they want a summer job. So that's the topic. Mm -hmm. Why why should I be considered for a summer job? Okay. It's a 150 word essay. Um, it has to be a minimum of 150 words, but no more than 200 words. And we will be reading through them more so for the completion of that they met the requirements that were inside of the of the essay. Okay, and uh, let's talk a little bit about the process. So we know we have the essay, mm -hmm. you have to apply, then there's training. Uh, is there anything more that goes along with the process? So um, the summer youth process begins with, now it begins with, because we have the two tracks. So the deadline, as he said, is coming up for the internships, mm -hmm. which is our new piece of the rebrand. Um, we have uh, collaborated with several different organizations to provide um, a differentiated way of the children, again, preparing them for the rigor. So the process begins with turning your application. Mm -hmm. Those applications can be turned in today. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wait for April 17th. And where can we get the applications? You can get the applications at um, 500 Wilmington Avenue, um, and they're also available online to be um, filled in online, or mm -hmm. they can print them off and um, actually fill them in. And if you are applying for an internship and a lottery, you can turn those applications in now. So you don't have to wait till April 17th to turn in your application. And we've the, the whole mindset is to give the child an extra advantage to getting a job because we had, eight, we had over 800 and some odd kids, somewhere around 850 children that wanted a job. And we unfortunately, because of funding, we had to turn many of them away. So this gives them an extra chance to now have another option and understand where they're gonna be before the, before the school year's over. Right. Which I think is amazing. And this is definitely being treated like a real job. So yes. what comes with that is documentations and drug testing. Yes. yes. Can we talk yes. a little bit about that? So um, part of the city policy is that all um, any employee has to do a background check mm -hmm. and they have to do a urine screening. So that's, that's like a must. Right. On top of it, there are documents such as the social security card, the um, mm -hmm. ID, which you can get a school ID or a DMV ID. Uh, you also need a birth certificate and you need proof of income. And okay. income is a requirement from Department of Labor. Um, it doesn't disqualify anyone. We have a, um, a quota to make, which is 27% um, can be over the, the um, income okay. eligibility and 73% can have to be at the poverty level. But we all have other funding. So we encourage those that think that they might not apply um, because they're mm -hmm. not gonna be um, eligible to apply. Right. 
And if anyone is actually nervous during the process and making sure they have all their information together, mm -hmm. they can call you. They don't have to hesitate, we, right? We can Absolutely. provide all that. One thing I want to go back to the drug testing. We we found last year that 99.9% yeah. .9 passed the drug yeah. test. Yeah. Right. Okay, so great. young people that's are good. ready to work. They're, they want. know what the requirements are, and that's what we have. So it's a good, it's good. That's wonderful. And now, with so many opportunities, you have the internship sector, you have the lottery. Can a student, or well, I should say youth, apply for more than one job? Because I can be looking at it myself, like, oh, I might want to do Absolutely. this area and this career, or? Yes, you actually have three choices. And those oh, choices okay. are marked on the registration right. um, form, which is part of the um, application packet. So okay. at the bottom of that form, um, there, all of the internships are listed, mm -hmm. along with the lottery. And so if the child wants to do the lottery, as I said before, you can turn that application in now and you check your um, internships. Now, each one of the internships has its own eligibility requirements. Okay. Um, Green Jobs wants an essay um, in addition to the requirements of the lottery. Um, Summer Collab, Tyler's Camp, and um, Freedom, Freedom School, School don't require an essay, but they do want you to be a high school student. Some, some of those, they want you to be at least a freshman, have completed your freshman year. Okay. Others want you to be a junior or senior. Then we have the Delaware Pathways. Well, Delaware Pathways is the initiative to um, work with, we're working with Howard High School. Mm -hmm. So you have to be a high school um, student at Howard in order okay. to apply for those. And those eligibility requirements are listed on the website as well. So what are the next steps once a uh, student's actually, or I should say youth is actually chosen for one of these positions? So with the, the, lot, with the internship program, we will take the individuals that apply separate them by what sector they want. If their okay. number one choice is gone, we'll go to number two. They'll then be able to uh, be started to be interviewed for those jobs. Okay. We, we're going to try and help them with preparedness for the job. You, know, you got to dress well. I you got to come on time. Dress, 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 well, dress, well, yeah. dress to impress. Come on time and you know, you know, give your best effort to be able to see what happens. And then there's, like I said, if you don't get it, there's always the lottery that you can fall back on as well. Okay. But that's the, you know, the 16th is the application deadline. We'll go from there to see who's applied for the positions and see what we have. And is the employment for the entire summer? Do you know the cutoff date? It's an eight week program. It'll start the middle of June yeah, to the middle the of August. Yeah, and it runs until August 17th. August 17th, so it's eight weeks, 20 hours a week. Okay, and as most city employees would love to know, is there any overtime? <laughs> yeah, no overtime. You got to work for the cause. You gotta That's right. Got to teach them young, right? But you know, it, but just with that, most of the jobs are, um, you know, we have a rapid response team that works for parks maintenance. So we have about 20 youth who clean the parks up. They start as early as eight in the morning. So you're only. Or eight in the morning probably would be a time that some would mm. start it. The latest would be in the evening if you worked in a park program. Mm -hmm. No Saturdays or no Sundays. Unless you're working as a lifeguard or in the right. pool system, you might have a Saturday or Sunday very job. Few, yeah, very few on the weekends. Okay, and how about uh, the age if your child turns 14 after the deadline? Much more like school. I can't have my son go to school if he's not five before a certain Absolutely. Uh, month. So Same how premise. does this work? So you have to be 14 years old when you turn in your packet because okay. um, the Department of Labor requires the work permit and you're not able to obtain right. a work permit until you're 14. Okay. So if you're 14 years old after um, April 28th, then you're unable to um, work this year. Okay, and is this uh, something that, I know you said it's new, is this something that if we weren't chosen this summer, we can look forward to the same internship program and lottery pick opportunity Absolutely. next summer? Mm -hmm. That's yes, the goal. I mean there's okay. some other there's a lot of different ideas on the program. You know, we have some kids that uh, their, their number gets called every year and other kids that don't. Right. So we're looking to see, you know, if you get a job this year in the future, do you get it again? Uh, if you volunteer at a nonprofit or school, does that get you automatically eligible to have a job? Right. So there's a lot of different ones we want, but the, the one area we haven't talked about a little bit too, we've got to get more private sector demand. Your government can only do so much with the resources mm -hmm. that we have. Right. So we're looking where private folks can come in and hire young people from the city and pay for it out of their funding. Okay. So there's, you know, they have an opportunity to be able to do different things. I'll give the gentleman credit for McDonald's. He's getting ready to do a little hiring for He's going to mm -hmm. hire 100 people from the city of Wilmington. Okay. So that's what other thing great. we're trying to do too is expand the program to other sites. And that was going to be my next question. Is this only for those who live in Wilmington? No. no. Oh, you're now, you No, Wilmington okay. residents do get priority. Right. Um, but okay. that it's open to Newcastle County area. The state funding that we receive says it must be open. Okay. So that's we felt that last year we had probably 25% of people who applied for our jobs mm -hmm. were from outside the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Right. So young people want to work regardless of where they live. That's true. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're trying to be. But our priority is just so kids in the city. I don't like to think of Parks and Recreation and Youth and Families as the pulse and heartbeat of government because such a, a big problem in our community could be crime. But here we're allowing our youth to be employed by the city. We're giving them an opportunity to work. Uh, what else is the department doing in regards to reaching out to these youth? Well, we have a variety. Right, right now we currently have a uh, basketball league that's being run in the winter that's funded from the, uh, a tobacco grant. We have 500 young people playing from ages uh, 7 and under to 17 and under that are playing in leagues uh, every, almost every day of the week they're playing. What's unique about it this year, we got a grant from the, uh, the American Lung Association. So we just started a program. We have 25 young people who are at Hicks Anderson Center who are playing in the league who are wearing a Fitbit. Mm -hmm. And we're measuring their body mass and their heartbeat and trying to make them more healthy. The other is for 11-year-olds, they come to see a gentleman, Mr. Pritchard, that we all know that was the principal of Bancroft. So as part of the league, they have to go either before their game or after the game to be able to get some life skills. Mm -hmm. um, we're also doing after-school enrichment camps. Yes. I want you to talk about that so a little bit. So the after-school enrichment camp is funded um, partially through Department of Education's um, mm -hmm. grant that we get for meal service. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten money from NRPA, National Parks and Recreation Association, to do a healthy out of time school. We're, um, to not duplicate services, we provide an additional arm, if you would, to some of the existing programs that already exist. We are beginning at Pulaski um, Elementary School, mm -hmm. where we, we, we will be providing support there. Um, and I believe it starts on Monday. So we have about 25 kids registered, and so there are three components to that program. Um, the first component is nutrition. Okay. Um, then in, with the nutrition, you have nutrition literacy. The second component is homework assistance. And lastly is physical activity. So those three components make up that program. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's all the time we have today. I know you guys have I need more time. Yes. 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 I need my own this weekly is the show. We're talking about. <laughs> yeah, we need my own weekly show, okay? We'll, we'll definitely love to have yeah. you back uh, yeah. more as we get into the summer. Yeah, so exactly. we'll, we we'll appreciate you having there. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. Okay. And on behalf of all of us here at WITN 22, I'm your host, Yesenia Tavares. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.